For each of the cases that I'm going to show in this temporal bone series, I'd like to spend a little bit of time at the beginning reviewing the anatomy, because the more you go through it, the better off you are in learning the anatomy and recognizing the various structures. So we'll start with this uh, first case, which was a patient who actually had hearing loss on the right side, but we're going to look at the left temporal bone in the axial plane. Now the scanning plane for the external auditory canal is important. It shouldn't be done straight transaxial. Uh, some of the cases that we do at Johns Hopkins are scanned straight transaxial with 0.6 to 0.75 millimeter thick slices so that way we can con reconstruct it in any plane we wish to. But we're just going to go with the anatomy as it was scanned originally. So here we are looking at the external auditory canal and what we see are the structures of the external ear and you know the helix of the ear this is the external ear when we have a small external ear on a congenital basis uh, the term that we usually use is microtia and that may or may not be associated with uh, external auditory canal atresia uh, but this looks like a normal cartilaginous and soft tissue of the external ear Going in in this direction, we come to the external auditory canal. And as we described in the original anatomy PowerPoint, we have two parts of the external auditory canal. We usually refer to the cartilaginous part and then the bony part of the external auditory canal. And we'll be seeing this obliquely on the axial scans. At the level that we're looking at the external auditory canal, we identify the mandible, and we're going to be seeing the temporal mandibular joint shortly and we have some of the mastoid air cells. We have a little bit of the jugular foramen over here. Let's continue to scroll. And as we scroll, we see a greater portion of the bony portion of the external auditory canal. Here you see the bone, the anterior wall, and the posterior wall of the external auditory canal. We are no longer seeing the cartilaginous portion. We are just seeing the bony portion. Where does the external auditory canal end? It ends on this structure, which is our tympanic membrane. So depending upon how you window the case, you will see the tympanic membrane uh, a little bit better or worse. And as you can see, I can sort of make the tympanic membrane go away completely versus highlight it as you move more towards a air window, uh, a lung window, if you will. So part of reviewing of the external auditory canal and temporal bone anatomy is scrolling back and forth as well as changing the window and level of the CT scan. So the tympanic membrane is identified as the medial most portion of the external auditory canal. So the pathology is going to be in the cartilaginous and bony portion and the adjacent soft tissues. Now that said, there is often a lot of pathology that will extend from the external auditory canal, potentially through the tympanic membrane and into the middle ear. So here we find the middle ear ossicles. And I'm just going to move this a little bit more centered. There we go. And let's uh, identify the anatomy. The most anterior of the middle ear ossicles is the malleus. And the one that is usually seen at the same level as the malleus is the incus. And we usually identify the anatomy in terms of the ice cream and the ice cream cone, with this being the head of the malleus and this being the short process of the, of the incus. So you're seeing a little bit of the ice cream and a little bit of the ice cream cone in this anatomy of the middle ear ossicles. This is the middle ear cavity. And when you have this little waist here, that expands into the mastoid air cells, this area of the waist is called the additus ad antrum. And I'm not sure how many Ds there are in additus, but uh, close enough. Additus ad antrum is the connection from the middle ear cavity into the mastoid air cells and the mastoid antrum. So the additus referring to the middle ear cavity the antrum referring to the mastoid air cells and the connection between the two. Uh, many people have referred to this as kind of the, the women's, not the best example of a woman's body, but the women's waist of, uh, of the aditus ad antrum. In addition, you're seeing a small soft tissue structure which is heading towards the 
head of the malleus, and that soft tissue structure is the tensor timony muscle. So there are two main muscles in the middle ear cavity. The largest one is the tensor tympani muscle going from the cochleiform process, which is this little bone prominence here, to the head and neck of the malleus. And the other one is the stapedius muscle. The stapedius muscle goes from the pyramidal eminence to the stapes. And that is very rarely seen even on high resolution CT, but we'll see how we do on this uh, particular case. On this same uh, section, we are identifying the internal auditory canal. You have the widening of the cochlear aperture, and you're seeing portions of the uh, cochlea. This is probably the maybe a portion of the basal or middle turn and then the apical turn of the cochlea. You're also identifying the vestibule and some of the semicircular canals, but they'll be more apparent on subsequent slices. So as we go further inferiorly, I want to point out this section. So on this section, we see two dots. The first dot is the neck of the malleus. And the second dot is the long process of the incus. So we saw with the ice cream cone, the short process of the incus. This is the long process of the incus. And you should see these two dots on every case. If you're not seeing them, then there's congenital absence of the middle ear ossicles, potentially. As we continue downward, I'm going to change the window just a little bit because what we're trying to identify is the incudostapedial joint. And in point of fact, you're seeing this on this slice. On this slice, we have a little remnant of the malleus neck. You have a little remnant of the long process of the incus. And you see that there is a little joint right there between something that looks kind of like that and something that looks kind of like that. And what you're seeing is the long process of the incus and one of the crura of the stapes and the communication here with uh, what is, again, um, I'll, I'll be challenged on my uh, spelling here, the capitellum of the stapes, which is the portion that will articulate with the long process of the incus. So that's the anatomy that you're seeing you know, on this scan. We're also seeing the vestibule. We're seeing part of the probably posterior semicircular canal, just a little bit of the basal turn of the cochlea. I made this kind of bright and uh, with lung window um, just to, so that, that way we could see the portions of the stapes a little bit better. Again, here you're seeing a portion of the stapes that's only faintly seen right here. And you're about to see the oval window, which is the location at which the stapes foot plate inserts to the vestibule. So as we continue a little bit further downward, we cross that oval window here and cross to the section which shows the structures of the hypotympanum. So we have the epitympanum, which is a, sort of the upper portion of the middle ear cavity. We have the mesotympanum, which is the middle portion of the middle ear cavity. And then we have the hypotympanum. The hypotympanum is characterized by three structures. They are the sinus tympani, the little bone here, which is the pyramidal eminence, and the facial nerve recess with the facial nerve nearby. So that's the facial nerve recess. Those are the three main structures here the sinus tympani, the pyramidal eminence, and the facial nerve recess with the facial nerve seen uh, just posterior to the facial nerve recess. Those are the main structures of the uh, hypotympanum. Right here, we find that area of the airspace that is about to connect to the basal turn of the cochlea. This airspace is the round window. So we talked about the oval window where the stapes inserts at the vestibule. Here is the round window which leads to the basal turn of the cochlea. And you may recall I said that this is the space through which they insert the cochlear implant. 
We're seeing just a little bit of the sinus tympani, and I mentioned before that that little bone connection between sinus tympani to the round window is something called the subiculum. And there's actually a connection between the sinus tympani and the oval window with the stapes, and that's called the ponticulus. So a little bit of middle ear anatomy. This is the cochlear promontory. Uh, the importance of the cochlear promontory is that's where we usually see um, glomus tympanicum. They sit right there on the cochlear promontory. So um, I think that's a nice start to the review of the anatomy. Let's get to some pathology. So as we slide over to the side that had the hearing loss, which is the right side, you notice that there is a soft tissue mass at the junction between the cartilaginous portion of the external auditory canal and the bony portion of the external auditory canal. And you notice that there is a little bit of a low density rim around this mass, identified as this darker area here. And usually you see that darker area also on the anterior wall as well, because this is really not fixed to the bony wall or the cartilaginous wall. This is a, an area of uh, cerumen. So this is cerumen impaction, basically earwax that we see on CT scan very frequently through the emergency room and on some of the evaluations for patients with hearing loss. It may just be something as simple as earwax. So earwax cerumen is the most common mass in the external auditory canal. It's entirely benign. It can be readily removed. And sometimes the issue is, is it connected to or attached to the tympanic membrane? So you do want to scroll and identify that uh, separate from the tympanic membrane. So I'm going to window this a little bit more so that, that way we can see the tympanic membrane nicely and it's far away from this cerumen impaction. So that's our first case with a little bit of a review of the anatomy. We'll go on from here.